All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. Wow. Wow, it's one of these streams. I'm back. I'm back, everybody. I mean, I didn't go for that long. I was gone for like a week. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome in. I hope you're all doing pretty epic. Doing pretty all right. Hope you're all doing okay. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome in. Um, yeah, hope you're doing all right. How are all y'all doing? Hope you're doing fantastic. As you can see, Orange, it's been so long since I've seen you. Sorry. I <laughs> I saw that name pop up. I was like, I remember you. It's been so long. Hello, everybody. Hello, Joe. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome in. As the stream title says, we're going to be talking about dinosaur anatomy. Um, I looked in the poll. We are doing... Uh, it was We were either going to be drawing dinos or dinos. So we are going to be drawing dinos today. Um, I looked in the poll comments. I realized there are more dinosaur fans than I thought there would be. Um, so to preface number one i'm sorry i'm not a dino expert <laughs> i'm going over like maybe like i'm categorizing them in like two kind of basic categories and we're going to be comparing them to modern i guess i'm popular here yeah we all know you um we're going to be comparing them to like modern animals because we're going to be analyzing the anatomy not necessarily their origins or their evolution or anything like that um so we are going to be, uh, what do you call it? We're going to be kind of discussing that by comparison to like where they came from, their origins and more, <laughs> more specific dinos. We're just going to be talking about some, uh, very general, um, anatomical observations. Um, but, uh, that's preface number one. Preface number two, I hope you brought your improv skills. And to preface, I, I like during the illustration portion, please note that everything is a joke. I will be saying that once now, and I will be saying it once before we get to the illustration portion as well. So I did this with the cloud stream. I did this with the antler stream. We're going to be doing this one more time. So <laughs> during the lesson portion... We're all co totally fine, but once the illustration portion starts, please remember that everything is a joke. So, <laughs> you'll know what that means when we get there. We all know what that means if you've been here before. If you've not been here before, keep that in mind. But alright, before we begin... Oh, goodness. Please load. Don't give me that. Don't give me the sass. Sorry, my... My definitely not script isn't loading, which is great right now. <laughs> no jokes here. No, of course not. There's no jokes here. Never. Everything that I say is serious and true. Um, but anyway, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. We art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member. For exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges. Or consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member. For exclusive channel perks like emotes. Oh. Or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone i was reading that and i was like oh i'm doing so well and then i read the same line twice so that's awesome anyway um anywho um before we get to the lesson -y portion though we have the submissions it's art submissions time we love this time we love going through the art submissions for those who don't know it is unicorn that is the theme for this month of june so everything unicorn themed or unicorn adjacent um is what we will be going over for this uh month i skipped last week because it was like a day after we had announced it so i'm like well go through uh so i went through both weeks submissions this week um you have until the end of june to submit your things um and then we will be switching the topics once again um but yes starting off with this one by bat cyan i love this kind of like ram unicorn kind of thing i was like i was like is this like a kelpie um but this is a this is a really really fun design i love the coloring styles that are very etched like they're, they're kind of like hatching that they use to add to like like add to the texture and add to the the highlighting and whatnot this is a really beautiful one 
um, gorgeous palette. I just bought a, I just bought a perfume that its packaging is the same colors. <laughs> um, but this is a really beautiful one. Um, well done. Thank you for submitting. This next one is by Emmy in the Discord. A very, very different style. Super different style. This one, um, no pen pressure. All like maybe two colors, right? Really, really cool. The minimalism is super neat. I love the look of this a lot. Um, like it, it's a good example of like less is more you know like it it's got a good silhouette it's readable it's a good choice of colors um it's it's really lovely i love the like i don't know what do you call that kind of like what do you call that what do you call that kind of like it's like a pen that looks like it's like pixelated like super pixelated i know there's a term for it and i can't remember it up for the life of me um but this is this is beautiful really really well done i love these kind of lines and I'm a really big sucker for like no line waiting. As much as I love line waiting, I love the look when people pull it off well. This is like, it's very nostalgic in, a, in an interesting way. Thank you for submitting. This next one is by Lee in the Discord or Leah. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest, if you're in here, uh, I saw your Instagram handle on the bottom. I kind of stalked your Instagram for a little bit. <laughs> um, this is a gorgeous style. I'm a huge fan of the like no lines, super geometric look. Um, this is a gorgeous piece. I'm a huge fan of it. I'm a huge fan of your work in general. I was looking through your, uh, your page. Um, I love how, like, again, minimalistic it is. It's, like, very soft gradients throughout, so it doesn't look too singular toned. But, like, your shapes are very well done. Your line work is, like, there is line work in there. It's just not emphasizing the external shape. It's emphasizing the internal details. Um, and this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. I love the colors. I love that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Very well done. Excellent work. Thank you for submitting. This next one is by Riv in the Discord. I, I like, I put the, I know you have your whole, like, logo in the corner, but I knew I was going to cover it up, so, like, I put some more credits up at the top left. Um, this is kind of like a steampunk kind of unicorn, ocean, oceanic unicorn very atlantis <laughs> this is a really fun one i love the like movement that you've captured the like kind of orangey yellow robotic unicorn um really contrasts against the mostly blue palette um and yeah the the squids that are around it really emphasize it like you know running around and moving it looks like it's moving at very high speeds um this is beautiful i think this is a really good take on um Ooh, I know you're here, Greek mythology nerds. What do you call them? The, 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 like, the horses that swim. They were, like, Poseidon's steed or something. I know you're in here, Greek mythology nerds. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I can't remember the name of it, but it's got that same vibe. You know what I mean? Um, like the, uh, the hippocampus. Yeah, the hippocampus. Is that right? I think that's right. No, 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 no. Yeah, the hippocampus. The kelpies are the ones that drag you into the into the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hippocampus. It's like the half mermaid, half half a uh, unicorn kind of, or half horse kind of one. It's super cool. It got it kind of gives me that vibe. Um, beautiful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thank you for submitting. And this last one is by Ziggy in the Discord. Kind of like a unicorn character with like a kind of fox unicorn. I sound like such a boomer when I guess this kind of stuff. I'm so sorry, but this is really beautiful. I'm a really big fan of like the digital line work that actually kind of still looks like a ballpoint pen. So like, I really like the way you captured this. This was just super simple. I'm a really big fan of just this kind of like a casual poses that still hold a lot of movement. I really like those. It's like, it's, it's like the, the like steed has kind of slowed down a little bit and the character has stopped to look around it's really really nice i like the i love the the way they've both been designed very simplistic but still very effective um but yeah well done thank you for submitting thank you all five of you for submitting i choose five every week when i'm here um you can submit your work through the Discord. It's not too late. Mer Unicorn Junicorn is still going on. So if you would like to still submit for this month, um, exclamation point Discord, join the Discord. Say hi to the other dart nerds. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Um, but uh, you'll be able to talk to the other streamers there as well and submit your work and just, you know, talk to other art nerds about their own work as well. But all right, let's get into the illustration version. Let's get into the actual uh, lessony portion. 
I don't want to take too long on the lesson, so the lesson isn't going to be that long. I've got a limited amount of time, but so this is why I prepared. <laughs> because I knew it was going to be slightly longer, um, but I, I wanted to make sure that it would still be done in a timely manner. We're actually only going to be talking about two different kinds of general dino shapes. I, there's lots. I know there's lots. I apologize. <laughs> but we're going to be going over like two general dino shapes, which is like the more biped classic dino and then the quadruped kind of classic dino. So the bipeds are like these guys, you know, that stand on two legs. I've chosen a T-Rex and a Velociraptor just to keep it really general. And then the next ones we're going to be talking about quadrupeds. I have a Stegosaurus and a Brachiosaurus loaded up um, when we work with that. But yes, we're going to be talking about... Um, the anatomy of dinosaurs. Now the thing with, the reason why I started with bipeds is because we, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, is that birds evolved from dinosaurs. Like I'm pretty sure that was the case, right? So what I want to do is I wanted to compare bird anatomy to dino anatomy, right? I wanted to compare the two, compare and contrast, right? So I have some bird skeletons here as well. We've got an ostrich over on this side and then we have just a general parrot um, on the other, right? So. The main thing that I want to connect, the main thing that I want to point out, um, is the similarity in the quote unquote arms when we look at them, right? Still in that general shoulder bladed area. But they do the same kind of, kind of shape. You know, but it's so funny because like, I don't know how to describe these other than dino hands, right? Because that's just what we've adopted them to be calling, what we've adopted to calling them this kind of elbows back to the chest, hands out the front, right? Where the, oh, what's this one called? No, the, <laughs> the humerus is kind of back into the body and it's the radius and ulna that are popping out with our um, digits. Inst out instead right kind of doing this kind of pose yes it's pride month everybody does this pose yes anyway uh, <laughs> but it is that similarity that you can you know point out with the birds versus the dinos right the thing that you probably notice immediately is that the digit number is less right probably evolution most likely evolution very certainly evolution right the difference in the arms is their lack of digits as they get you know more modern i guess and that's just you know their lack of need for them anymore hello ray numwick thank you i love you thank you for lurking you see a robin outside it's a dino it was a dino at some point yeah, basically, birds took dino hands, removed the fingers, and boom, wing, pretty much, right? That's basically that, right? The anatomy is pretty well the same, right? What I'm doing here is I'm comparing and contrasting the two pieces of anatomy because it's important to, I think, have... This is how I learned human anatomy as well, is just to have a referential point, right? You can compare humans to other animals and vice versa, and then seeing that relationship will help you uh, much better understand both species, right? Dinos have big, long tails, right? But the number one thing that you should also observe about tails is that they are just an extension of the spine. Birds also have a very, very tiny tailbone. The same thing with us as well. We have very, very tiny tailbones. They just do not extend, right? Dino tails were there to help them steer. That's with most animals with tails. They have tails to help them steer, to help them balance, right? Birds, because their weighting has now, their weighting distribution is now different. Right? Their feet can grab better. The, the weight on their bodies are different. There's more weight within their arms, quote unquote, because they've turned into wings. Their feathers were bigger, right? Their weight distribution changed, so their need for these back tails, I assume, was no longer necessary as much as it was for proper dinos. So while they still have tailbones, not super big. for dinosaur hands draw them in a neutral pose realistically the palms are facing each other rather than having it pronated super true yeah instead of having them for those who don't know what pronation is when we have our hands in two different positions if we have it palm facing up 
that's called supination. If we have the palm facing down, that's called pronation. The way that you remember it, palm facing up, it's like you've got to hold a bowl of soup. Supination. And then pronation is facing downwards. If you want it in a natural pose, it's more like it's going to be to this side. So, they're correct. Yeah. And the last thing that I think I'm going to point out with the... Actually, maybe not the last thing. I mean... Eh. Yeah, the last major thing <laughs> I'm going to point out is the legs, right? The legs still in that digitigrade position. If you've been here before for previous streams, digitigrade means that you stand on your digits. You stand on your toes. So these bipedal dinosaurs also stood digitigrade. They've got those digitigrade legs just like birds do. So the femur is all the way up in the body. We have a radius and ulna back here. Or sorry, not radius and ulna. Tibia and fibia <laughs> that pop out this way. This is where all of our... Um, tarsals yes tarsals are metatarsals are here and then this is where our phalanges slash fingers slash toes will go they walk on their toes by comparison to us who walk on our tarsals and metatarsals if you walk flat on your feet that's your tarsals touch the ground that's your heel that means that you are a plantigrade. If you have your toes touching the ground, that means you are digitigrade, right? So you can see that similarity between the legs with each dino versus bird. I can actually walk and run on the ball of my foot. Everybody can. It's just really, really bad for you. <laughs> are feathers going to be discussed and covered in this live stream? Possibly. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So the main three things that I'm going to write down. Because the thing is, is with this live stream is we're not going to be talking about the history of dinosaurs. We're just going to be talking about the comparison of anatomy. And when I talk about anatomy, I tend to talk about bones. So if feathers get discussed, then that's going to be during the illustration portion, most likely. I mean, I talked about feathers with wading. Like, the difference in, like, why they have tails versus why, like, birds don't really have as big or as heavy of tails. But other than that, not sure. So, number one. Set arm. Slash wing. Anatomy. Remains similar. Shortened spine, but still retains the curve. Wow, my handwriting is terrible when I have to wear a brace. Anyway, three is the legs remain. Digit agreed. What am I gonna do? Insect anatomy? I probably won't. <laughs> I don't. Did I ever say I was gonna do that? I mean, I probably won't. I'm gonna be honest. It's insects are super weird, and it's like it's one of those things where it's like there just isn't enough for me to do a, or there isn't enough, or there's too much for me to do a concise kind of lecture on it because insects don't have skeletons to compare to. They have exoskeletons. Um. So my main piece of advice would be drawing skeleton for like drawing insects is just, you know, <laughs> look at a reference and observe. Um, brace? Why brace? Um, my wrist has been kind of acting up a little bit the past two days. I mean, it's not terrible, but like I care for my wrist health a lot. So like, even so before it gets serious, I'm making sure that I take care of the problem. Um, so I'm like, I'm not trying to draw with my wrist loose. So I'm trying to keep it, like, in the same position and, like, keep pressure on it so that it doesn't, like, hurt even more. Sticks. Lots of sticks. Depends on the insect. Fed a June bug to a chicken. I've fed, uh, corn to chickens before. 
Good, good smarts. Yeah, no, I am, I'm very cautious with my wrist health. So like, if there's any kind of health that I watch out for, it's my wrist health because these are, these are quite literally my money makers. So like, I'd much, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to not have extreme carpal by the time I'm like 30, you know? Fed corn to a chicken, not my character. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've held out my hand and there's like a little bit of corn and the chickens, you know, like peck it. It's really funny. I like feeding chickens. Feed corn to tiny dinos? I think people only draw insects when they love nature and when they're doing horror. Ah, well, I mean, insects are great for alien illustration. <laughs> alien illustration or horror, 100%, because insects are just something that people fear. But, like... Sometimes you just have, like, insect enthusiasts. <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty much all I want to say about the bipeds. The thing with dino anatomy is that it's really not too dissimilar to what exists right now. Like, it, like it's kind of the same way that I, I recommend people learn how to draw, like, dragons. It's like, take what you know and then apply that to there, right? So when I say to people draw dragons, I say look at... You can look at dinosaurs if you'd like. I'd recommend looking at birds and some reptiles and then kind of mashing that together and figuring out what belongs where um but then obviously you can take inspiration from other creatures as well it has i went to a i went to an aquarium in atlanta and it like baffled me that i hadn't used a moray eel as inspiration for a dragon yet silly me i love insects my camera rolls a horror show to some people plenty bug oh that's fair yeah i get that Dinos are the same as dragons, but with wings. In a way. In a weird way. But alright, that's pretty much all I have to say about the bipeds. So let's get to the quadrupeds. Now, the quadrupeds are a little bit more interesting. Um, because I was looking around, right? And I'm like, okay. So, I have I have a Brachiosaurus here, and I have a Stegosaurus over here. Uh, just as, like, our, our baselines. Because I'm like, I don't actually know crazy amounts <laughs> about dinosaurs. So I was like, I'll just pick the, like, general ones. Because, you know, these are the ones that more people are going to be looking for. Um, what will the next be theme be for July? I don't actually pick the theme, so I don't know. <laughs> Newts have a good poses for dragons and skinks. Personally, I actually... <laughs> I know I, I say to reference birds a lot. I actually really like um, cat poses for dragons. Cats. I reference a lot of cats, a lot of dogs, if I want the pose specifically. Yeah, it's a surprise. I don't know them either, so it's okay. It's a surprise to me too. Um, but what's interesting about quadrupeds, right, is that birds are not quadrupeds, right? Birds did evolve from dinosaurs, but birds are not quadrupeds, right? So if I look at a bird skeleton, it won't be that similar, right? So what I was like, okay... You know, some reptiles are ancient. It looks like reptiles. I pulled up a Komodo dragon and a crocodile. If we look at these two skeletons, they're not actually that similar. Like, they have the general same shape. But if you look at, like, you know, the shape of the skull, the way, the direction of the the spine, right? The look at the legs, right? They don't look that similar. They're actually not super comparable. Like, if you look at these legs right here, not the same as here. Same with the back legs, not the same as here, right? These, these, uh, this anatomy is very different, right? It's, it's got a lot of the same parts, but it's actually quite different. So when looking around, I came up with rhinos and elephants. Now, they're completely different, and they don't really come from dinosaurs but if we actually take a look at the legs right the way that the spine bends and the way that it moves they're actually a lot more comparable to each other by comparison to what they actually evolved from so again i am taking inspiration from animals in the way where their anatomy is comparable and referential by comparison to what they actually came from so let's take a look at quadrupeds and their reference and their relation to each other within their anatomy. What I think is the most interesting and the most you know ugh. Dinos are ancient creatures that aren't understood with anatomy. It's just that their anatomy is ancient, right? It's it's a it's a, an anatomy that 
doesn't really exist for today's world, right? Because evolution has caused them to change and they don't exist anymore. So it's like, you know, they don't are, they aren't matched for the world that we currently live in right now, right? So like this anatomy is kind of hard to find perfect matches for because there just aren't ones anymore, right? So, you know, in terms of just referencing the general leg shapes and the anatomy of the spine and stuff like that and the way they visually appear, I found that elephants and rhinos were actually pretty close in terms of that. Like, look at the brachiosaurus versus the elephant's legs. It's almost exactly the same thing. Like, it's really cool if you take a look at that. Um, so let's actually talk about that first. If we take a look at the legs of like our elephant compared to our brachiosaurus and our stegosaurus, right? By comparison to the previous guys, right? You can actually see up here the scapula, the shoulder blade-esque kind of thing, right? Comes down into the humerus, comes down into the radius and ulna, comes down into our, um, the carpals and our phalanges, right? By comparison to our previous guys, though, our digitigrades, these guys are plantigrade. They're plantigrade, which means that their toes and their, um, what do you call it? Oh, I'm blanking. <laughs> the, I keep, I just said it. The tarsals are on the ground. A lot of their toes kind of touch the ground. Even if they do kind of have that tiptoe look, it is a similar position. The Brachiosaurus and the elephant especially are plantigrade, right? Their toes all touch the ground, right? Their heels touch the ground. And their bones are in similar positions, right? The only, the main difference, right, is that the pelvis is slightly different. These guys are mammalian, so their pelvises are slightly more pronounced i mean the brachiosaurus pelvis is actually quite pronounced here but the stegosaurus one is a little bit more reptilian in which then it curves over the top here but the mammalian pelvises actually separate the spine with the um like the tailbone and stuff like that heel is correct but i was thinking of the bone name <laughs> the um the tarsal um, but a heel, yeah, that's the, that's the non-scientific term, is a heel. Um, yeah, the, the bone in there is called your tarsal. Your tarsals. I believe, I think, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've had these lessons taught to me. Um, but yeah, the leg anatomy, the general shape of them, the general positioning is pretty similar, right? We've got our heels and our toes directly touching the ground, which is really nice. I actually started by looking at cats because I was like, maybe cats would be different. And I totally forgot that I was like, and that was a blank on my part. I was like, oh yeah, cats are digitigrade. That's not correct. <laughs> I was like, that's not going to be correct. Um... Ooh, yes, Joe is correct. We have our camps coming up this summer. Apologies and in interrupting the lesson for a moment, but we have camps coming up this summer. Camps, and we have other classes taught by other instructors. Um, I'll be teaching um, figure drawing and comics and manga as two intensives this summer, which are like two week long um, boot camps for art, pretty much. <laughs> um, I go over more intense lessons and more serious teachings with each week. Um, and you get personalized feedback from me. You get to talk to me and your other classmates, that kind of thing. Figure drawing is very much just, you know, figure drawing, comics and manga. You get to create your own comic by the end of class. So yeah, if you want to sign up for that, exclamation point summer camps, I think. I mean, I don't know how you did that, Joe. There's just no text in there, but maybe that's just... Very epic and fun. Great for beginner or intermediate artists. Yeah, if you want to improve some of your skills, feel free to check out the camps. Or the classes. Either or. Whichever fits your schedule better. But yes, so the legs in general, pretty similar to one another. We even have the scapula in the same places. Pretty neat. <laughs> Next thing that's pretty similar is the positioning of the rib cage. Now, if we took a look at the elephant, 
right? That rib cage covers that entire stomach portion. It's the same thing with all of these guys, except for the rhino, which actually does have a cavity back here. But we have that rib cage pretty close to the center of the body. This is very reptilic, the way that the rib cage is just in the entire midsection of the body, right? With mammals, generally there's like an open cavity near the bottom, kind of like the, the bottom section right before the pelvis. But in terms of like reptiles, they have just one giant spine, one giant rib cage going down. Like if you've ever seen a, like a snake spine, uh, like a snake skeleton, it's just one big rib cage, which is pretty funny. Um, but in this case, one big rib cage covering that center organ. And then we have the spine. The spine, again, similar curve, similar movement, right? Especially with the Brachiosaurus and the elephant, right? The elephant actually does have a tail. So we do get that continuation of the tail. Again, this is more mammalian, where mammals, because of the curve of their spine, the tails go up and down. Brachiosaurus and Stegosaurus, a little bit more reptilic. Their spines move back and forth. Like if we are looking at them from top down, they move back and forth by comparison to the up and down. You can also see this in current wildlife. If you look at a shark versus a, um, oh, what do you call it? Or actually, that's not a fair comparison. If we look at a dolphin versus a, like just a fish, right? Dolphins are mammalian, you can tell, with the direction of their spines, right? The spinal cord goes up and down by comparison to the side to side of fish, right? Mammalian, um, mammalian spines tend to curve back and forth by comparison to side by side, which is less natural for us, which is why both the rhino and the elephant's tails are curving downward, whereas the stegosaurus and the brachiosaurus have their tails perfectly straight out. Those tails are more for balance and for direction and steering. Elephants and rhinos, not so much. Um, well, they have them for balance, but not necessarily for stealing. Um, or for steering. Stealing. Steering. The cassowary is the most prehistoric looking dino we have. The cassowary is such a strange bird. I love the cassowary. If that's, if that's the bird I'm thinking of, right? Hang on. I need to look it up because that name is so familiar. Yes. Yeah. The cassowary is such a, like, I raise you the... Oh, what's that big build bird that's from the Philippines? I raise you that bird because that one's that one's actually an ancient bird. It's like a it's like a like a hornbill, I think is what it's called. Cassowary or so much, but like I personally think the hornbill is a little bit freakier. Elephants and rhinos are bad at crime. Yeah, they don't really fit into small places. Shoebill, shoebill, thank you. Yeah, shoebill. Yeah, those those guys are. Um, those guys are a lot. They're a lot. I like them, though. I like their noise. They kind of sound... Uh, well, actually, it's pretty TOS. I can't say what I think that it sounds like. But they are pretty awesome. <laughs> Explosions. Yeah, I was thinking of a different kind of explosion where concentrated comes out of a barrel. But, like, you know, I like... You know what I mean? <laughs> um, really cool, really cool birds. Um, but yeah, the spine, again, similar curve, similar movement, um, even though it doesn't curve in the same direction, doesn't move in the same direction, they still hold that same kind of S-curve to them, which is really important when we draw most things in general, right? Spines, when you're drawing them, generally spines will always hold this S-curve, right? Um, nowadays our spines start by going inwards, like if this is our rib cage, we're facing this way. Nowadays our spines kind of do this magic, right? But again, it still holds this curve, right? With this one, it's a little bit different and kind of goes up and then back down. But I guess that's just the, the cervical going a little bit higher up there. Um, but I still think it's cool that spines have just kind of stayed the same forever. <laughs> but alright. That is pretty much our comparison between our quadrupeds and our modern animals again. So let me write this down one more time. So our plantigrade legs. Remain. 
similar. Number two. What did I say? Rib cage. Covers most of the chest and stomach. Similar spine bend. So I apologize, my handwriting is not great right now. <laughs> I do not have full access to my movement. Similar spine bend, though the movement is opposite. One, another. All right, so that's pretty much our comparison. I don't want it to be... I don't want this lesson to last too long. I want to have a good amount of time for our actual final illustration. Uh, and then we could talk about drawing just general dinos. Both beast and ants never get anything like traffic, rebellion, disease, and stuff. They spend their entire lifetime doing the same thing daily. What a life. Personally, I like my free will. Um, just spend my free time drawing now. Let's go. My homework has nothing to do with dinos. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had homework in years. Um, but all right. We're going to get into the actual illustration portion now. As a preface, once again, please remember that everything that I say is a joke. It's a joke, people. Um, a joke. It's a facade. It's fake. Though I will... And, oh, also, if somebody asks, because new people will probably pop in, if I write this on the screen, this is a tone indicator. This means slash J for slash. It's a joke, right? I am joking. If somebody asks me, it's like, hey, is this real? Is what you're saying real? This sounds kind of real. You're not being, like, facetious or you're not being, like, strange about it, right? And I'm like, no, everything that I say is totally real, guys. Everything that I say is completely real at all points, right? I'm not breaking character, <laughs> but just to let you know, that's what I mean, all right? We're saying that right now. Um... But anyway, let's get into drawing some dinosaurs. Now, again, you all voted for dinos versus dinos, right? And obviously, we're going to be drawing some dinos together here. Um, oh, goodness. I totally messed this one up, didn't I? Hang on. No! Wait. Hang on. I totally messed up my, like... No! Hang on. What's this color? And this one needs to be just slightly darker. Yeah, because I want to create a new one. I want my character design. Oops. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference between sarcasm and joking, though. Yeah, no, it's, it's not sarcasm that I'm going to be doing, though. We're not gonna- we're not gonna be- nothing I say that is sarcastic, okay? Like, everything that I say is true and real. <laughs> you know? Got five classes worth of homework. Yeah, we're just starting the illustration portion. Do not worry, you haven't missed anything. I haven't even started the proper, like, illustrative portion yet. You know? It's okay to eat here? Yeah, of course! favorite kind of dino nuggets do you know what's really interesting actually i one of my one of when every single time that i hear about dinosaurs people are like oh yeah well dinos uh, like original dino studies don't look the same as they used to a lot of people are saying that you know with more modern studies with more common sense we kind of realize that like the way that people originally drew dinos is probably not how they looked right because you know there are two things that don't stay when things get fossilized right it's fat and muscle and stuff like well not two things but like there's there's major things that don't get stay like that don't stay when it comes to fossilization right fat muscle all that stuff doesn't stay neither does cartilage cartilage is made up um is what a lot of fish and like and like um you know 
lot of fish and other mammals are made up of. A lot of sharks are made of cartilage, right? Hang on, I'm gonna look up a... We're gonna draw a T-Rex together. That's what we're gonna draw today, right? Because I think that... Hang on, skeleton. I think that a lot of the times when people bring up, like, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it's the number one thing where people are like, oh, people got this skeleton wrong because, you know, we don't actually know what a T-Rex looked like, <clears throat> right? What at, I, There was one photo that I found was really cool where somebody redid a rhinoceros um, in the way where if they showed what a classic, if they did, like, classic dinosaur studies, right, um the rhinoceros looked a little bit different um, or looked super different because they didn't add any of the fat they didn't add any of the cartilage so it was like super shrink wrapped right and i thought that that was really cool um so we're gonna do that today we're gonna we're gonna be drawing you know what dinos properly looked like because you know with new scientific studies that have come out we're actually able to look back and see what dinos properly looked like right and i think the most interesting study that i saw um is that some of the dinosaurs actually they got their bones wrong there are some dinos where they were like oh actually we fitted these together wrong so now we gotta recreate them and maybe we'll be able to see what they actually looked like so i'm gonna do some inferencing of my own based on like the stuff that i read you know not to mention they're probably very bird-like right right so like maybe there's stuff that the cartilage hid too you know have you seen those videos of what they sounded like? Yeah, I have. It's a lot of screaming. There's a lot of wailing. I'm like, I think that it's a little bit much for me. You know, I think that like the screaming doesn't make sense. But like, I guess it, you know, it's it's a bit strange. Kind of sounds similar to what I hear at night outside my window. But like, I don't think that means much. Um, so let's say that we start with this T-Rex, right? But I think what's important Six to five million years, I imagine you lose a lot of weight. Yeah, probably. Now, personally, you know, we have a lot of, like, dinos that also came from the water. But there's some pieces of those dinos that just don't make sense to me, you know? No, I get the screaming. That might say much about me, though. You understand it, you know? It would make sense. Like, I think the screaming would make much more sense if they were able to do that more high-pitched noise. You know, maybe the maybe the maybe the mouths allowed for it a little bit differently. You know, maybe because you know we don't really know what a dinosaur looked like, right? And I think that it's important that we kind of put our scientific brains together. There's some pieces of like the the. It, what do you call it? Like the 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 prehistoric like fish that don't make a lot of sense to me, right? I'm like, you know what would make more sense is that if that was on a land dinosaur, right? Maybe that would allow for it to scream, you know? What's that? What you hear at night? Oh, the the screaming? Oh no no no! I don't live at. Is that not a common thing where you are? Like, I think that, like, from everybody that I've talked to, they've always said, like, oh, yeah, the screaming is at night. It's at different pitches depending on where you live. They've been getting a lot louder since, like, the you know what's been happening in Canada, right? So it's, like, there's... Maybe it's just because it's, like, been digging up old earth. I don't know. It's normal. Yeah, it's normal, right? I already hate this and you barely started. This is just what dinosaurs look like, Evie. Hi, welcome in, by the way. I think the biggest problem is that, like, you ever see that meme where it's like, science has gone too far? I think they're actually starting to go too far, you know? Because, like, there was a point where they were like, oh, we got some of these skeletons wrong. And then they're like, you know what? Let's, like, you know, start to truly combine them and see what, like, what new things we could make, right? But they started to get kind of weird with it. And now when you try to Google the science, like, lab where that started, like, you can't even find the articles anymore. Like, they're kind of just out of existence now. I guess they got shut down or something. Which is unfortunate, you know, because, like, it was it was such, like, a feat of science. You know what I'm saying? Because there was just so much potential with it. 
Science is just getting started. Do you think that another, like, laboratory would, like, pick it up? Because I want to see more of that, you know? The screaming. Yeah. I feel like it's, like, the more people you ask, the more you'll realize that the screaming at night is pretty common. How do you find the motivation or inspiration for very long projects? It is mostly just kind of telling yourself. I think it's just giving the energy to yourself, you know? Just being able to tell yourself, like... Like, oh, this is what I want to do. Or, like, telling yourself, like, this is the thing that giving yourself an obsession with your own creations really helps i don't really like this feathers are not speculative they're found fossils with feather indents and the encasing of the fossils really that's interesting yeah a lot of gets a lot of things get hidden with cartilage you know i think cartilage is just something that like we don't really realize is just a huge part of everything. Once hugged a bear. Nice. Was it fluffy? It wasn't a wild one. Ah. I looked up and you made it ten times worse. How did you do that so fast? This is just what... Listen, this is just what a dinosaur looks like. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Did you not see that report? Like it was on like Nat Geo. It was I guess it was weird because it was like on like a it was on an episode that aired at like 3 a.m., which is like odd, I guess. But like the I'm just kind of up at that hour anyway. But it was on Nat Geo, you know, like the it was a report about like the science lab that was like, oh, we've discovered that like dinosaur parts are like modular and you can like mess with them and there's like you know that's how they survived for so long because they took parts from other dinosaurs and made themselves like these super dinosaurs you know I have watched Cabinet of Curiosities I haven't watched all of it but I've watched a good chunk <laughs> what's happening this is just we're just talking about the history of dinosaurs we're we're oh we're talking about the new studies that have been coming out where like they've realized that dinosaurs they didn't just eat other dinosaurs for like sustenance they ate other dinosaurs for survival in terms of like they were they were modular so they were able to take parts from other dinosaurs and add them to their own anatomy the problem was that like a lot of the things that they added to themselves were like done with like cartilage and fat right because it's like they're sticking them directly into their body right it's not like it's not like it's actually part of their bone structure. It just helps them move. What do you mean, sarcasm? Everything that I say here is completely true at all points. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, it's... <laughs> hey, you, don't think, you don't think I'm being serious? Like, I saw this, like... I think you guys should watch Nat Geo at 3 a.m. more. Then you'd know why the screaming happens. And then you'd see, like, the documentaries about the clouds and, like, the history behind Santa's reindeer and stuff like that, you know? I think it's really important for you guys to get a proper education, you know? What happens if you lose a leg in the Jurassic period? Just accept it? No, you replace it. Exactly, exactly. It kind of sucks that, like, we evolved out of that, you know, just being able to replace our limbs, but, like... Would have been pretty cool, in my opinion. <laughs> like the cloud stream all over again? Yeah! Yeah, because we're just talking about facts. You must- you, you guys, like, who have been here before, you guys have to know by now. Like, the- like the two kinds of streams. When there's like a stream that has quotations on it, it means we're gonna be talking about we're gonna be getting a history lesson. <laughs> Very eye-opening. True, right? 
It was really cool. Special history lessons. Yeah, yeah, because you guys just don't aren't up on that geo at like 3 a.m., which is you're missing out, really. Clouser, thank you for the twenty dollar dono. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is your first stream here? Oh my god, welcome in! Ah, see, so you're, you're getting- you're learning what the history lessons are! These are the best, right? Which one did you vote for? Dinosaurs or dinosaurs? If you voted. It must kind of hurt when they, like, put all those eyes in their singular eye socket, right? Just to get all that different kinds of vision. <laughs> Probably Sasquatch, but losing his house in the fires. Smoke's making us groan, cough, sneeze down here in the U.S. Yeah, no, that's probably right. I mean, like, again, like, it's like old dirt that's been dug up, right? So who knows what's been lurking under there. But, like, the screaming that happened normally was, like, you know, it's just kind of a nightly occurrence. You get kind of used to it. The more they did it, the easier it got. Yep. Could they exchange other parts like eyes? I fell asleep at like 3.45 and missed a bit. Yeah, yeah. No, they explained that. It was like, it wasn't necessarily that they exchanged eyes. They just put in more. Like, we all know the dinosaurs weren't the smartest. Like, it was like, they had really small brains and stuff like that. But they, instead of like removing their eyes and like putting in new ones, they kind of just crowded them. It's really similar to like this shark, right? This shark that was here. They like... Instead of, like, them losing teeth, the jaw just kept growing. You know? <laughs> you fell asleep right before the interesting part. Yeah. It's unfortunate. The most interesting part, like, the climax of the documentary. It's, a, it's okay. It lasted, like, maybe, like, two hours. But, like... It kind of felt, like, six. Like, I don't know. It was, like, I was stuck in front of my TV. And then, like, suddenly it was, like... <laughs> It was the morning, and I was like, wait, but it was, like, 2 a.m. five minutes ago. Strange, but, you know, it is what it is. I woke up feeling refreshed, though. I wasn't tired. My eyes weren't red. But again, I could never find that, that like, we're documentary again, so. <laughs> what do you mean, more eyes? You just missed this documentary, man. It sucks. Do I have any tips on drawing talons? Yes, I do. If you know how to draw a pyramid, right? This kind of pyramid shape with a triangular base. If you take that triangular base, extend that top of the pyramid, and just connect them back. That is your three-dimensional shape right there. All right, so it is, if I draw it from the front, right? It has that curve with the flat bottom. So you just have to curve that top bit and bring it down like that. Right. Pretty similar. <laughs> a few hundred more. I'm gonna be honest, I don't have enough uh, wrist health to draw a few hundred teeth. I'm kind of just paraphrasing what this dinosaur looked like anyway. Like, it probably would have had more limbs, honestly, but like, you know. If you can't find the documentary game, that's a huge red flag. No, this is pretty normal for Nat Geo 3 a.m. I mean, that's how I learned about the clouds. That I went cloud hunting, but, you know. We don't talk about cloud hunting all the time, you know what I mean. For those who know, you understand. Why is the jaw like that? He probably needed it. Would help get the get the prey a bit easier. I 
Maybe only a month old or so? Maybe. All the better to eat with, true, right? Cloud hunting? Oh yeah, yeah, you missed that stream. The the how to draw cloud stream. You would have gotten uh when we talked about clouds. We talked about cloud hunting and the history of clouds and that kind of thing. 3 a.m. Nat Geo just kinda of tells you a lot of really cool things about the world and secrets and whatever. The Christmas special was all about antler. It was all about like the reindeer and stuff. That's when the when we had our antler stream. I haven't seen Nat Geo lately. Yeah, I mean, I only watch it at 3 a.m. because of, like, the, the interesting stuff, you know? What would win, a cloud or a dinosaur? Oh, <laughs> cloud, easily. That's not even a question who would win. Miss that stream. It's always rewatchable. Yeah, you gotta bring, you gotta bring friends. Friends, quote-unquote. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. Yep, it doesn't really matter anymore. It's better if we don't name them again. It's better for us all, really. Cloud hunting is more dangerous than move Pokemon Go back in the heydays of release. Trust me, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, gosh, yeah. It's uh, Cloud hunting was a lot. We do this channel really excited what I can get out of it. I'm glad. I'm glad. i hopefully I've convinced you to watch 3 a.m. Not Geo. It's it's a really good time. He's probably got a bunch of different kinds of eyes, right? Like that's like the normal T-Rex eye, but then there's probably like you know what I mean? Yeah, I assume it probably hurts a little bit to, like, stuff them all in just, like, the singular eye sockets, right? Like, it's probably not great. Uh, not a great feeling. <laughs> Looks like it could be a Metroid boss. Honestly, you're right. Yeah, no, it's so good. <laughs> Scarier than Ridley, in my opinion. You deterred me from watching 3 a.m. Nat Geo? No! You should watch it! It's so good! It's the- it like- It feels like I'm waking up from like- Like a three-day nap or something when I finish an episode, you know? Just super refreshed. New outlook on the world, you know? Gotta have stretchy eyes on because yeah, I'm really right. It's the only time you get the good in depth documentaries, a lot of the other ones simply beyond recognition. Yeah. The best ones are like at around 3 a.m. and then you can get like the, the fun stuff, you know. Yeah, welcome to the community! Welcome to the community! See, I'm talking a lot about Nat Geo at 3 a.m. Anybody else watch any, like, like documentaries from Nat Geo at 3 a.m.? Anybody find any, like, really cool ones that they enjoyed? What's this supposed to be? It's a dinosaur. T-Rex, but real. Yeah. This is what a real T-Rex probably would have looked like, honestly. The house hippo? House hippo's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's chill here. It's pretty chill. I thought the 3AM Unicorn show was pretty good. Hmm. 
You know, I kind of remember that one. But, like, I think that was a night where I actually fell asleep just, like, right before 3 a.m., which is unfortunate. All I really remember was something about, like... I don't know. It's hard to remember, like, what was dream and what was reality. Something about fighting. Something about specific kinds of screams. I don't know. It was R-rated, though. Yeah, I mean... It's okay. Like, it is educational. I guess it's just there to, like, you know, ward us a little bit, you know? We don't actually know. Nothing really that says dinosaurs couldn't have been real. Any dino reconstruction drawing could have been possible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> what a dinosaur looked like really is just an extension of our imagination, right? Because, you know, like, like I said it a little bit earlier, right? Dinos didn't, like, just hunt to, like, eat, right? They hunted to also, you know... They hunted for, like, body parts and stuff, right? To, like, remodulate. To, like, to, to change what their, their body looked like. So that, like, they could survive better in the wild. Which is why, like, like a T-Rex was considered an apex predator. Not because it used what it was given to it. But because it used what it thought could better help it hunt out in the wild and because of how big and strong it was it was able to just collect stuff a little bit easier right cow documentary is pretty good it gave me more info about cows i didn't even know growing up at the dairy state the dairy state yeah what was in that one i didn't catch that one it sounded pretty cool though it sucks because it's like cows it's my whole branding but i didn't even see that one what was that one about Hello, Squeaky Rabbit. It's simulating like the Borg. <laughs> How are you? I'm alright. How are you? Have you ever regained the modular ability? Perhaps it lurks in a few dormant genes? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, the, the fact that scientists found it in general, right? Like, I mean, nothing's impossible. Like, it'd be pretty cool for, like, limb regeneration, right? But I guess that means that we have to steal from each other. That might be pretty... That might actually be pretty bad. <laughs> All things considered, you know, how we are as a species. Get my room paint today? Nice. Squid documentary is one of the best, almost mind bending. Need I say more? Yeah, no. I I did catch that one. I did catch that one. That one was pretty pretty nuts. I like I really learned a lot about squids, but like at the same time, I feel like I learned nothing. Which I guess is what was like intended to happen, right? Oh, that was supposed to be the Velociraptor one. Oopsies. This one I guess can be more just like a general dino like then. Yeah, whoever had the more the most limbs, the king of the dino jungle. How does he attach those limbs? Very haphazardly. It, it's, it wasn't ever really figured out how they were able to do it. It was more so like figured out that they were able to. Like there was some like gene coding that suggested um, that they were able to. Like all dinos had this modular ability. When they went extinct, the gene just kind of got lost. And none of us really had a need for it, so... Because it's not like we hunted each other, right? So we, you know, just kind of lost that modular ability. But dinos needed it to survive. So they all had this kind of ability to just stick random things on them. On themselves or, like, put other things in their eyes. Like, you ever see those, like, symbiotic relationships between, like, 
some dinosaurs in each other, right? It's like the it's kind of like how those fish have that symbiotic symbiotic relationship with like sharks, right? It's like they go in like the cleaner fish, they go in, they like clean the shark's body or his teeth off, and then like they get food in the process. It was similar to that, like like some of the birds, like the, some of the prehistoric birds, like they would go in, and they would help attach the limbs, and then like that's what they estimate. Like they never actually figured out if that was like totally true but like that's what they like said was possible that was in the later part of the documentary jellyfish forest documentary made me not like the ocean for a bit i'd cuddle them even if i died yeah i don't know if i'd be able to withstand the whispering of the jellyfish forest but like i've been told that their beauty was quote-unquote hypnotizing which i guess makes sense <laughs> slim vibes here. Yep, pretty much. I mean, this means that he's, like, defended from every angle, though, right? Could dinos add other dinos' heads fully? Was that information lost to history? See, that one I'm not sure, because that one requires, like, you know, like, neural things for it to work, right? It's, like, stuff with brains and, like, other scientific things that I don't really understand. That one, I, I like, I don't remember if they said that, anything about that or not, but that would be pretty cool. Who's meant to be a Sheldon? His name can be Sheldon, sure. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Don't y'all think? I think that's a pretty good estimation of what a dinosaur would look like. What kind of theropod is this guy? Oh, he's just a T-Rex. He was just a T-Rex who figured that it would be, like, good to attach different parts to him, you know? My next vacation will be the Valley Fish Forest. I'll return lots of extra knowledge. I'm glad. Tell me how it is. I, I hope that it's nice. I hope you find what you're looking for. Amazing how that tiny brain keeps those limbs moving. Yeah, it was really fascinating. It's like, even though, like, the intellect of, like, the dinosaur always remained the same, somehow they were just still able to control everything. Pretty cool. Sheldon is indeed just a humble T-Rex. Yeah, he's nothing out of the ordinary. This is just what T-Rexes were supposed to look like. Multicolor because of the limbs? Yeah, yeah, no, that's why I haven't colored all of them yet. Because there's, like, different parts that don't belong to him, right? Well, I guess they're his now. He reclaimed them, but... <laughs> what was my favorite documentary? From 3M, uh... What do you call it? 3M Nat Geo? Honestly, probably the cloud one. The cloud one was really interesting. As much as I liked the, the reindeer one... Um, I think the cloud one really interested me the most.
He may collect extra limbs all the time. Don't try it, though. It isn't legal anymore. <laughs> yeah, the thing with... The, the, the problem with them collecting limbs is that they didn't have the gene that actually let them attach it. So they just, you know, had the limbs. <laughs> so, you know, we can't really do that anymore because we can't just take limbs. You know, fair, fair point, I suppose. Learn the knowledge of the jellyfish. They wait for you. Yeah, they wait for all of us eventually, I think. It's just making the trek out there. You know how expensive a plane ticket can be. A small price to pay, I guess. What's my favorite dino Pokemon? Amara. Or Aurorus. Aurorus, that's the one. The bigger one, the evolution. Lovecraftosaurus. It is a little Lovecraftian, right? It makes me wonder if Lovecraft actually knew about the dinosaurs before we had that scientific revelation, right? I guess he went to the jellyfish forest and survived. If I had to guess, you know. Sorry if I've stopped talking as much. Like, my, my throat has started to hurt. <laughs> I have water nearby, but it's not enough. Twenty fifty scientists will confirm this is the actual look of the T Rex. Will they? Did you go into the did you go into the jellyfish forest? Where'd you figure that? This is still happening? What do you mean it's still happening? We're just talking about dinosaurs. I like a helibracopod for a scientific name. I also like that. Let me copy that down. I mean, it's just a T-Rex, right? But, you know. It's just a T-Rex. That's all. Honestly, Lovecraft shouldn't have gone to the jellyfish forest at such a young age. If you gave him... Give him a fear of the ocean. Yeah. Kind of sucks. But so be it, you know. I came in late. What happened to his jaw? What do you mean? He, he, he just mod. He just, like, you know, grabbed it, right? Modular. Modular dinosaurs. I gotta do the whole rundown on 3 a.m. Uh, 3 a.m. Nat Geo again, guys. Oops, oopsie. Just remember, if you're gonna watch 3 a.m. Nat Geo, just make sure you don't have work the next morning. School is fine. But there is a chance that your bodily functions might not operate as well, but you should be fine overall. Sheldon isn't the smartest T-Rex, but he's the smart the smartest to take that tongue. It's true, yeah. Definitely would have helped for, like, reach, you know? Where's the original jaw? I don't know. Guess I lost it in the fight. 
Because, you know, when you, when you, like, I'd assume when you, when they fight each other, right? Like, sometimes they don't come out unscathed. So, maybe the thing that it stole the jaw from took its jaw first. But, you know, that won't kill it outright, so. Perhaps the T-Rex won in the end. You mean this is the original jaw? No, no, no. The, the you know how modular the dinos are. Like it's not his original jaw, really. But you know, it's his now. Sometimes one of your hearts will stop after watching. It's just start back up in twenty four hours. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like sometimes, like when you watch a Geo at three a.m. Like. Like, certain functions stop, or, like, you know, there's certain functions that just don't work as well, kind of thing. Um, but, you know, that's why I say, like, don't go to work, especially if you work in, like, a like a heavy lifting job or something like that. But if you want to go to, like, school, it should be fine. Or, like, or if you just, if you work from home, it should also be okay. But just, you just gotta be careful, that's all. Watch and take care of yourself. worth it a real small price to pay for the real facts yeah honestly like it's like i'm glad i'm learning about real sciences now you know I just shelled in the tashtal limbs. I, 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 um, I explained that a little bit ago. It's like, um, it's like a symbiotic relationship between the, like, birds and the dinos. Right? Kind of similar to how, like, feeder fish will, like, help out sharks. You know what I mean? I think that's pretty much what he would look like, right? There's a full documentary. Yeah, I mean, the dinos already do have a full documentary, but for this dinosaur specifically, pretty good. Get air on that GL3 AM. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Heard a theory that dinos attachable ability lurks in birds, but they don't have the strength to acquire parts. You know if it's true or not? No, I don't. I don't actually. That would be pretty cool. I mean, that would explain why I saw like some birds trying to like take off parts of their wings, but like. You know, like I didn't actually see them attach anything, so. Can't be sure, but that would be pretty cool. Like to be like have like birds be able to be modular too. They are the closest relatives of dinosaurs, so like if we're gonna find that gene anywhere, it's gonna be in them. Guys have recommended brushes or settings, canvas size, practice sketching. For me personally, my favorite brush is the um Kyle's pencil. I also really like the vine charcoal brush. These are all Kyle brushes. Um I think just like finding a nice brush that feels nice to you is important. 
push that very So I am gonna paint this. Let's let's talk a bit about the art process now. I am gonna paint this one. What I'm gonna be doing first is I'm going to be I'm the type of person who likes to work on a single layer. So what I'm gonna be doing is applying my lighting really quickly first. My general lighting and shadows first. Thank you for the five dollars, Joe. Least I can do for the trouble I caused. You are a gem. Thank you. Yeah, I like to point out my general highlights and shadows first before I do anything else. And then I merge them all afterwards to like properly how do you call it to properly um shade this and properly paint it out um because i like to do everything on a single layer very similar to iggy um so i'm just kind of very lightly planning out everything first and then I'll move into the proper painting afterwards. Yeah, it kind of sucks that Dino Nuggets can't get this level of detail. Yeah, I would have killed for real dinosaurs to be Dino Nuggets, you know? Again, like, back when I ate Dino Nuggets, we didn't know about real dinosaurs, but... You know. A girl can dream. Yeah, there isn't really a right or wrong canvas size. Joe's right. Um, unless you're printing something, then, like, yeah, minimum 300 DPI. But, like, if you're just working digitally, no right or wrong size. Okay, and with that, what I can do now, I'll put everything into a group, copy and paste it, merge it, and then we can start working. What we're going to work with today is we're going to be working with, oh, where is it? Let's work with the builder brush today. Sure, it's been a while. shortcut to make the skin look scaly do you need to draw all the scales by hand i'm gonna work with a li a mix of feathers and scales for scales I, sp I do specifically have a brush that i can work with um i'm sorry i don't remember the artist who made the brush for the life of me but it is a really really nice brush um it just very very quickly prints on all of the scales for you which is really nice I believe it's available for CSP and Photoshop. Not too sure for anything else, but um, if it's readable in Photoshop, then it's readable in um, Procreate. It just might not operate quite as nicely as what I know. I haven't painted in a very long time. I'm a little bit rusty. Where'd it go? Where did it go? Ta-da, we're gonna have to buy screen times to these. Ale brushes, there we go. Yeah, you see this? Boom. Isn't that nice? Gosh, it makes my life so much easier. It 
it's a lifesaver. How do you think most of your followers found your art? This channel. <laughs> I do have my own out art outside of this channel as well. It's just like a lot of like the people who come from here definitely found me through this channel. My actual artwork, it's just like, you know, just general, like maybe they found a post of mine. Maybe they know some of my friends. You need to get a sail brush. It's nice, right? Yeah, this is a good one. I just, I wish I remembered the artist. I'll try and find them again. Um, if I find them again, and then I, I'll, if I find them again, I'll post it in the Discord. Um, because I can't remember it for the life of me. I know they offered them for free. It was either free or it was like a very small amount of money. Um... Even if it was free, I probably I definitely paid for it, just because I don't like taking brushes for free usually. Especially if they're of this quality. Like, this is so nice. Does the tongue work like a more powerful frog tongue to help us see your parts? Yeah, yeah. Because you know like how like um lizards and such were super powerful back in the day, like I or like powerful, <laughs> like super big back in the day. I assume that like they'd like, those parts were invaluable to, like, a lot of dinos. Yeah, I'm very rusty with painting. I might use a different brush. I started with this one and I realized I'm not good with it anymore. Sad. It's okay. I don't have the time to make this super, super good. Like, I'll do my best, but, like, it's not gonna be amazing. It's gonna probably be a really rough illustration, but that's okay. I should really move the scale brushes further up so we don't lose them. Save me so much time. Yeah. Oh, you found my webcomic? I'm so sorry that I haven't updated it in years. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm so sorry. I, like, I don't really, I don't think I'm gonna continue updating it. It's just, like, it's one of those things that's, like, I kinda, like, somebody asked earlier, like, how do you, how do you keep the motivation for log projects? I kept the motivation for that one for a while, like, Grayson. Um, and then as I kept doing it, I kind of realized that I was getting super burnt out of it. And I really didn't want to touch it anymore. Um, but, yeah. It's just, there's some things that you just can't keep the motivation for. And that's okay, too. left i will do my best to <laughs> finish this as quickly as i can i don't think i will get it done done but i will at least get some of it done
I so should have multiplied like the line art layer because it wasn't perfectly. What do you call it? It wasn't perfectly black, so it probably would have looked a lot better, but here we are. Could have, should have, would have. Will the limbs stay preserved or will they rot off for a while? That's what's interesting, is that they will actually just stay there, right? That's what's interesting about the gene, is that, like, it's it's almost as if, like, when they reattach, they, um... Oh, what do you call it? When they reattach, it's like it becomes part of, like, the body's, like, organic system. Right? So then, like, they, they take part in it, and they're like, oh, we're part of this body now. Okay, we better start working to accommodate this function, this body's functions now, and they'll just keep working. And it's really, really cool. And it's like, if if we found that technology and, like, rebirthed it and, like, made it, like, applicable to us, like, that would be, like, game-changing. But again, that would mean that we'd be able to steal from each other, so maybe that's not the best thing to have as a species, because we're kind of a selfish species, so. It's so cool cooking. Thank you. I'm doing my best. Doing my best to capture what a real dinosaur would look like. It's kind of like with the clouds. Like, I did my best. It's like, I'm not like I can capture it perfectly, but, you know, doing my best. What are favorite tools in Photoshop? We're thinking about getting it and want to be prepared. Um, I really like that when you draw a straight line, you can just hold shift and it moves up and down. If I have a bunch of layers, I select all of them, click the folder, and it goes into all of those. If I have an effect on something, let's say I put an outline on the merge layer, if I hold Alt, I can just drag it and apply it to something else. Um, also, if I draw something, instead of copy and pasting it over and over, making a bunch of layers, I can select it with the lasso, hold Control and Alt, and I just copy them over without creating new layers. It's all just on the same layer, which is pretty neat. Yeah, there's lots. I like Photoshop functions. <laughs> CSP is also really, really good. I'm just super used to Photoshop. But yes, as a minor reminder as well, camps this summer. Hello. Join in them if you can. I am one of the lovely instructors that will be working through them. There are other instructors as well. Summer Intensives gets you direct feedback from me on your artwork um that's what the classes do as well summer intensives are a couple week long boot camps um i'll be teaching figure drawing and um what do you call it figure drawing and comics and manga if you would like to take those classes with me there are other lovely classes that will be happening this character design with josh um gosh what else is happening <laughs> there's lots of different camps there's lots of different camps there's more chill ones so there's like a digital art camp there's like a cartooning camp stuff like that um but i am teaching the more intense camps the more bootleggy or sorry not bootleg uh boot camp kind of classes um a little bit more difficult um but you can still go in there if you just want to learn for the first time or hone some of your skills that is also totally cool <laughs> No, your hand sprain? I'm so sorry. Hopefully it heals quickly. I'm sorry if I'm not 100% paying attention to chat right now. I mean, I am trying to get this done kind of quickly, but I'm doing my best. Like it's looking a little too smooth. I'm like, I a little too smooth and not enough movement. Like it's starting to lose that movement it had before. So I'm trying to like fix that a little bit.
Have I watched you across the Spider-Verse? No, I haven't yet. All my students keep asking me to. They're like, have you watched Spider-Verse? I'm like, no, I haven't. I don't have time. It's like I have a birthday party this weekend, and then I have my birthday the weekend after, so no time. <laughs> And then during the week, it's just constant streams of work. Like, I am never not working, so... Agony, I guess. You know what I had to do recently? I had to... There was um, a student from my old high school who was doing interviews for some people. It's like a friend of... Uh, or my brother's partner. And like they asked me, like, hey... It's like I need to do an interview for, like, co-op. And I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. Because <laughs> I got this job through co-op. And it was, like, a lot of, like, the same questions that I had to ask my boss, which was pretty funny. It's, you know, like, how do you feel in your career? Like, how do you feel as, like, what's your biggest strength or your biggest weakness? Or, like, if you didn't pick this career, what would you have picked instead kind of thing? It's kind of funny. I don't remember if I asked you guys. How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing today? Y'all doing all right? How has your week been? So I don't remember if I asked. And if I did, that's okay. I'm asking again. Because there's new people in here now. I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. I'm alive and I'm speaking. And that's what's important. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, Chaotic J. Doing decent? Well, better than bad, for sure. That's good, that's good. Okay, I'm actually gonna do the back, like the, like the, the quote unquote scaly bits just because like this like needs to be at least somewhat finished like I definitely won't be able to get all of this done and I apologize because it's really ambitious normalish day fair enough the New York City and the air quality's been not so great, but other than that, I'm good. Oh gosh, yeah. Past two days, all I've like, I walk outside, smells like smoke. It's pretty bad. Like I, like I'm in the starting point, so like you know, I know exactly how you feel there. Of eyelids use like a gecko. No, so like with um with some dinosaurs, what they would do is they would take the eyes of other dinos so that like but they're not you know like the smartest. So what they do instead is they kind of just stuff them all in the same place instead of like removing their own and swapping them out. So when well, you got a lot of dinos with a lot of like super stretched out eye sockets, and it's just because they squashed other eyes in there. You know what I mean?
It's been great. I'm glad. She's calling him Sheldon now. Well, there was some people who wanted him to be named Sheldon, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. Let's call him Sheldon. We allergy sufferers appreciate feeling well enough to function. Literally, right? My allergies have been kicking my butt recently. Like, my, my voice is not what it usually is. And, like, I think that's new. So I've never had voice problems before in terms of, like, my allergies. But maybe it's something completely different. Who knows? Maybe I'm actually sick. And I have been for a while. Who knows? The world is burning. I, I like, I think <laughs> anything is possible right now. Oh, I forgot the, on the title. No, no. So this is like a dinosaur anatomy stream. We already talked about the anatomy portion. Like, so my streams, how they work, usually if there's like a lesson to go along with it, we have the lesson -y portion in the beginning, and then we just have the illustration at the end. So the illustration portion is my decision. I'm the one who wanted to draw the dinosaurs. I'm the one who wanted to draw the real dinosaurs, you know. Because not everybody watches Nat Geo at 3 a.m. Like, I get it. It's pretty late at night. So if you don't watch it, I'm glad to tell you what it's all about, you know? beautiful thank you i am kind of rusty at painting so i apologize if this doesn't look the best like i mean i'm doing my best but like you know <laughs> i know i can do better but i'm just trying to make sure that this looks passable into it to some degree <laughs> I poke it you might die but go ahead you know dinosaurs pretty funky creatures don't even know how to draw a dinosaur well we talked about the process for how I think when I draw dinosaurs right how I, how I think when I draw a lot of things is refer to anatomy that I recognize, right? Especially with dinosaurs, there are some uh, anatomical features that are pretty similar to other animals that we know, right? So for dinos, I compared them to like, like rhinos and elephants and birds, right? So there are similar creatures that can kind of give you an idea of like, you know, how to break down the process of drawing something that is unfamiliar to you. We talked about that earlier. Right now we're just drawing a dinosaur. It's really good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm doing my best. I might do the fun little, like, faded blue kind of trick 
Like, oh, it's behind here. You can't see it properly. The atmosphere perspective look. Pretty, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not talking that much right now. My voice is kind of shot. <laughs> like, I'm still trying to speak a little bit, but I don't want to like completely lose my voice, you know? It's hurting just a little bit. I think I said that to my students last week too, because my voice has just been like not in the best shape recently. Which is, like, pretty annoying. Air quality's killing me, man. Imagine if Dinos had access to all the limbs of the modern era. It might have been better that they... That this trait didn't survive exactly right like i'm i'm personally happy it didn't survive because then we can't exploit it but like yeah if they had access to all of the stuff we have now pretty bad would not be a good time i don't think Isn't this brush awesome? Like, what? That's so good. Oh, it's going really good. Keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just want to spread the word of what actual dinosaurs look like. brush is so cool like it does like it's so good for like texture <laughs> you know arachnosaurus true that's the part is gonna have a lot of free fancy to do with this information yeah i mean the research came out pretty recently so i don't expect them to actually know it but like would be pretty cool if they brought it in. Like, it's pretty new and unused. Also, the Jurassic Park franchise has kind of died a little bit. Like, have you seen the newest one? Pretty bad. Or at least one of the newer ones. Oops. It's the scales. Yeah, it's so good. Love this accurate series of drawings. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's super fun to be able to educate all of you and like what the accurate kind of like dinos and stuff looked like. Like it was It's fun. It's it's a lot of fun to be able to to talk about this kind of stuff. Okay, it's about 10 minutes left. Like, obviously, thank you, Sue, for the $10 dono. I appreciate it.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get, like, this front portion mostly done. Like, I didn't even touch the teeth, because I'm like, I know that I won't be able to get that done, but, like, be able to do some of the arms and whatnot, but probably not the, probably not the back body, so hopefully that's okay. Like, I just, it, it's, it's, this is a really ambitious one, like, I don't think I'll be able to finish it. <laughs> Saw the one with the mutant bugs has confused the plot, the anatomy parts, what came for and dino dinners with people was the menu. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you know what real dinos look like. Maybe you should join us one night and watch a uh, watch 3 a.m. not Geo. What's that? It's a T-Rex. Love the first two Jurassic Park movies. The franchise as a whole is ruined for me now. Yeah, I watched the- I think it's the most recent one where they brought back, like, the original cast members onto the, like, movie. And it was, like, you could tell that, like, oh, what's his name? Didn't want to be there. <laughs> like, you could tell that some of them, like, did not want to be there. <laughs> Or, like, we're just doing it because they're like, yeah, okay, I'll show up. Jeff Goldblum, that's it. Jeff Goldblum didn't want to be, like, he just kind of looked like he was there just for fun. Like, he totally was not taking it seriously. caused the extinction of the dinosaurs see they kind of covered that they were saying like because of like how much like you know armor and plating that they gave themselves like if there was an asteroid it wouldn't really hurt them that much they would have been able to like hide from it um so they speculate that there was like you know there was just a point where they like multiplied and like just applied too much to themselves to where they kind of just, you know, modified themselves into extinction. Because at a point, you know, there's only so much modification that the body can go through, I guess. And then, you know, it was just, they just modified themselves into oblivion. Pretty dark, if you ask me. So I'm not going to totally do this entire critter because I just don't have the time, but... Even if I didn't get to paint some of this back section, I will add the scale texture back here. This is like trying to consistently overlook a, com overlook a 
computer eventually just gave out. Yeah, yeah, overclock the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, I assume, like, because they were saying, like, they don't actually know for certain, because, like, obviously we don't have a time machine. But, like, the, the asteroid, even if, like, asteroids hit, like, it just, it wouldn't have devastated them more than they'd already devastated themselves, you know? Pretty good lesson for us, I think. The gamma ray burst finished them off. Perhaps it was just their own hubris that they didn't realize they had. I want to do this Velociraptor leg because I want to add the feathers. <laughs> I want to do the feathers. pretty good from afar like if i zoom out i'm like ah it's pretty pretty all right the like skin folds not too bad not too shabby minutes left too actually um it's okay i'm just gonna do my best this was mentioned before but have you ever seen images of that one dinosaur trudon it looks so weird to mean like being intelligent doesn't mean having human anatomy you know yeah yeah let me let me take a look mmm he's pretty funky I like him Yeah, it's always fun seeing the base for the dinosaurs before they decide to do the body modifications. Like, they're pretty funny. Because it's like, oh, it looks so empty, you know? It's like, where are the extra flippers and claws that I'm used to, you know? some good drawing warm-ups doodles doodles that you're comfortable with things that like you don't think are too strenuous on you i think are pretty good drawing warm-ups um maybe even if you really like the challenge maybe even doing something that challenges you a little bit it really depends on what you draw that makes a good warm-up generally i don't even warm up like my warm-up is just kind of working a bit slower before i start properly illustrating Like my warm business sketch. Hang on, I'm almost done.
from a distance, it looks like six dinos instead of one. Well, to be real, like, it is technically just a bunch of dinos rolled into one. He just rolled them to one himself. As all dinos did, you know? Alright, y'all. I will be editing this just slightly further just to, like, you know, clean up the general layout, but that is about as much as I can illustrate today. Thank you all so, so much for joining. Um, thank you all to who, thank you to everybody who played along <laughs> with 3am.geo. Uh, I'm going to be having fun working with that idea later on. Um, but thank you all so, so much for joining this stream. Um, if you don't know too much about the channel, don't know too much about us. Um, we're not just a YouTube channel, we're also an art studio, an art school. If you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, wingcanvas.com. Classes and camps that are coming up. If you'd like to check out the camps that we offer, there are still, sign-ups are still available before they happen in July. Um, and if you would like this file, it will be a little bit more complete when, um, you next see it in the Discord, exclamation point Discord, or join us over there. We also have an Instagram where you can see all of the photos and updates for camps and whatnot, um, and classes, stuff like that. If you would like to check that out, that is available to you there. Um, and if you would like the working files of any of my lessons and anything that we do on stream you're gonna have to check out our patreon patreon or our youtube memberships we just posted a new working file um but we post one working file every month and there's also discounts on classes early access videos and class recordings available there for you guys to check out all right next stream that we will be doing let's see here uh, this Sunday, we will be drawing How to Draw Unicorns. That is with uh, Vanessa. Vanessa will be teaching y'all how to draw unicorns this Sunday. Um, and then... Oh, as it turns out, I'm not here next week, Saturday. Next week, Saturday is with Josh. Josh will be teaching you how to draw a character expression sheet. So make sure that you tune in for both of them for the next for next week. But all right, thank you all so, so much for joining. And I'll see y'all next week. Au revoir. Bye-bye.